Brothers and sisters, we are so glad to be here today. Uh, I want to wish all mothers a very blessed, a very happy Mother's Day. And during this very special occasion that is dedicated to every one of you, to all mothers, we also want to recognize that there could possibly be among our congregation and those who are listening to this message today who have been trying to conceive but have difficulty doing so. We also consider mothers who grieve at the loss of their children or mother and child relationships that has been strained or dysfunctional. And we also want to remember especially those who have lost their mothers recently. And so this morning, before we go further into the message, we just want to spend some time to pray for these mothers. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that you've given us the privilege to become mothers. And Father, we want to especially pray for those who have been trying to conceive who wants a child so much, but has not been able to do so. Lord, we commit them into your hand, and we pray that you bless them with children. Father, we want to pray for those who have strained relationships with their children, or children who have strained relationships with their mothers. Father, we pray for the healing of relationships. And we want to pray for those who, who have lost their mothers recently. Lord, we pray for your comfort. We pray for your peace to be upon them. We pray for you to lift up their grief from them. Lord, we want to give praise and thank you because we know you care. You care for every one of these mothers. You care for every one of the children. And we want to commit this morning's preaching, this morning's sharing into your hand. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, I've been uh, thinking about what to share today, and I have decided on today's topic. Mothers are human too. The reason why I'm leaning towards this topic is because of the many young mothers we have in the congregation. I can see how they are struggling trying to bring up their children, bring up their babies, bring up their adolescents, and some struggling to bring up their young children, their teenagers. It is really a challenge. It is really not easy. And so as I reflect upon how my mother brought up the four of us, and how my wife, being a mother, has to bring up three children and the struggles and the challenges they went through, I came to this one very simple conclusion. It is really tough to be a mother. Even if you have six arms, it is not nearly enough. Well, a mother's work is never done. She has to work 24-7. She has to work 365 days a year. Even on the leap year, she doesn't get a break. She has to work the 366 year. She's the first to get up and the last person to go to bed. Her work is enough to occupy her. Her work is enough to occupy her all the waking hours and there's no time to rest. When she's sick, she still has to work. Not only that, whenever she works, she has to multitask. She has to do house cleaning, she has to do grocery shopping, she has to balance the family finances. And when she's cooked, she still has to text, she has to answer calls, she even has to work on computers. And after whipping out those tasty dishes at night for the, or, or lunch for the family, she has to clean up and then she has to wash and dry the dishes. On top of that, she has to mop, she has to decorate the house, she has to do gardening, she even has to do the laundry. This is all part of her job scope. And you know what she has to do? As a mother, she has to give undivided attention to all her children. <laughs> Take care of them and make sure their needs are met. For the younger kids, she has to feed them, soothe them when they cry, change their diapers, clean them, bathe them, put them uh, to bed. For the older ones, she has to make sure that they do well at school, chauffeur them to school sometimes, tuition or tuition centers, coach them at home, help them in their handicrafts, check on their homework, drill them, and give them mock exams. Wow, there's so many things a mother has to do. And guess what? When the children misbehave, she has to chase after them, reprimand them, discipline them, picking up and cleaning the house after they completely destroy it. When the children are emotionally down, she has to comfort and counsel them. She has to be patient and she has to be their friend. Man, 
There's so many things that a mother has to do. A mother is indeed like Superman. She is super mom. And that is the problem. Why? Because when things don't get done, or when things are not done well, guess who gets the blame? <laughs> who is responsible? Mother. She's supposed to do it. And so when it is not done, or it is not done well, the mother gets the blame. And she has so many things that she needs to do. When one thing is not done, it affects all the other things as well. It is the domino effect. So end up mothers make a lot of mistakes. And the reason why mothers make lots of mistakes is because they're in charge of so many things. The daddy never burns the clothes while ironing because the daddy doesn't have to iron clothes. And so as a result, we get upset with mummy's many mistakes. And the mistakes are so many because she has to do so many things. And if that was difficult, if it was difficult to be a mother, it's even tougher now, especially during the MCO period. In our day and time, so much emphasis is placed upon our children. There are so many things we have to cope with, they have to cope with. The slippers keep enlarging, and there are more and more things they need to be prepared when they go into school. And guess who bears the bulk of this problem or the bulk of this burden? It is mothers. Mothers are the one who has to now educate the children. And with the demands placed on our children, the increased schoolwork, the mom gets to do more to look after their education. And because of that, not only the mothers are busy, the children are also busy, and mothers lose their traditional source of helpers, child labor. And because the cost of living is rising, some mothers have to work, but they not only have to work in the office, they also have to work at home. And even if they have a domestic helper to help them, the mother still has to double as a manager, a supervisor, a quality controller. And during this MCO period, this is really tough because now the mothers have their husbands with them 24-7. They also have their children with them. Just the other day, I was talking to uh, uh, one of our church members and you know, I asked him how it is like. He said, well, I have my wife with me and I have all my children with me 24-7 and it is crazy. And of course, now children have to go online for their education. And guess who has to do the bulk of the teaching, the bulk of the preparation? Mothers. And guess what? During this MCO period, Everyone is at home. What does the mother have to do? The mother has to cook three meals a day. We are into our eighth week. And so to look, imagine the number of meals they have to cook every day and all the meals that they have to try to come up with. And it's really not easy. I know because I've been cooking as well. We've been eating very simple. We only have one main meal a day and one very simple meal in the evening, maybe fruits or some soup. But even then, that is challenging because I realized the very first week I bought too much and food goes bad. And when I try to prepare a meal, the cooking can go wrong. It may be too fast. It may be too slow. It may be too hot. It may be too long. And sometimes when you're in the midst of cooking, the ingredients are not right. And so the food comes out wrong. And when the food is presented to you, how do you feel? Do you like it? Your mom has put in a lot of work in order to prepare those meals for you, but you put a food, the food in your mouth and you say, yuck, I don't like it. I don't want to eat it. It's really tough. It is not easy at all. Restaurants are different because they are pros and they do the same thing the whole day. And very often they specialize in only a few dishes. But I realized that during this MCO period, we want to have something fresh, something different every day. And that is really, really, really tough for mothers. And guess what? And with the MCO, mothers are expected to dress up and make up and even sound like a Doraemon. It is really tough being a mother. But you know what? Mothers are human too. 
If you pinch them, they will feel the pain. If they have a cut, they will bleed. And the blood that oozes out from the wound is just like yours. It is red in colour. Knowing how much your mother has to do and cope with, the hard work and the great amount of sacrifices she has to put up with, and also our often unrealistic expectations. Brothers and sisters, especially those of you who are children to mothers, can I encourage you? Can I plead with you to cut your mum some slack? Be more accepting, more forgiving. Daddy, can you give mummy a break? Not just during Mother's Day, but from this day forward. It's really tough being a mother. There are four things you can say to help your mum to make your mothers feel better. The first thing you can say to your mum is, it's okay. It's okay. Accept your mum as she is. Is your mum a good mum? Yes. Is your mum a perfect mum? No, because there are no perfect mums in this world. Can you accept her as she is? with the mistakes, with the bloopers that she make in her life. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 says this, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. I want to read this verse again with a slight change. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving your mum just as in Christ God forgave you. Let us learn to forgive our mothers. There are times when she makes mistakes. There are times when she nags at you. There are times when she forgets the thing that you have told her over and over again. There are times when you feel that she restricts your freedom and she disagrees with you. Well, it is natural for mothers to disagree with you because you and your mom grew up in different generations. Your experiences are different. Your perspective, your perception are different. You do things differently. And the bottom line is that they love you and have proven so by their constant hard work and their boundless sacrifices. I'm sure that making mistakes or upsetting you was not their goal in life, nor was it their goal for the day. It is usually because they don't know better or even if they know, they are not able to do it not because they don't want to do it, because there are simply so many things to cope and simply because they are human, inadequate, imperfect. Can you forgive your mom for the wrongs that she has done? When she makes the mis next mistake, can you say, it is okay, mom, it's all right, no worries, let's move on? The second thing you can say to your mom is to say thank you. Colossians 3.15 tells us that we need to be thankful. Being a mom is often a thankless job. So many things to do in such a short time because people usually have their own schedules. Day after day, we are all so busy. And sometimes we have this, this, this pressure just to rush through life. And inevitably, we take, granted, we take for granted the things our mothers does for us. Maybe, brothers and sisters, we need to hit the pause button and say thank you to our mom whenever she does something for us. Let's learn to be appreciative of what she has done and what she continues to do. The third thing we can say to our mom is, let me help you. Galatians 6 verse 2 says, carry each other's burden. And in this way, you fulfill the law of Christ. The Bible tells us that we must love one another. And to love one another is to carry one another's burden. Perhaps you can alleviate some of your mom's burden by offering your help towards your mom. Tell her, ask her, let me help you, mom. And when you offer help to your mom, remember, you also need to ask her how she wants it done. Otherwise, you're likely to be scolded for messing up a system. I've tried. I've tried to help my wife and I ended up getting scolded instead because I didn't do it the way she wants it done. 
But I've learned that whenever I offer help to my wife, I'll ask her, how does she want it done? And just do it exactly the way she wants it done. And mom, if your children offers you help, do allow them to experiment. Give them space. Allow them to make mistakes as well. And in that way, you'll train them. And the more you allow them, the more you train them, they'll become better helpers. Then you can do less while they do more. The fourth thing you can say to your mom is, this is for you. If anyone does not provide for his relatives and especially for his immediate family, he has denied his faith and is worse than an unbeliever. The Bible teaches us and wants us to provide particularly for our relatives. And in this case, I want to encourage you to give to your mom generously. What does she enjoy? How can you make her happy? Is it food? Is it a massage? Is it a holiday? Or maybe she just wants to spend time with you. Give her what she needs, but also what she wants. So brothers and sisters, would you learn to say this to your mom? It is okay. Thank you. Let me help you. This is for you. Now, when I was thinking about this, mothers, really, it is not easy for you. And, and, and as much as your children or your husband offers help to you, I just want to tell you that there's another person that really cares for you and cares for you through and through. That person is none other than God himself. God cares for you. And as I was thinking about this, I remember this story that is found in 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. And there was this wife of, uh, of the company of prophets that probably worked with Elisha. And she cried out to Elisha, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that he revered the Lord, but now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. That mother, during that particular period, was facing an insurmountable problem. It is really tough, especially for people during those times. When you have no husbands, you have no identity. When you have no husbands, you have no income. The husband has died. And the husband has left behind two young children. And not only that, the husband has left a lot of debts that she has no way of paying back. What is she supposed to do as a widowed woman with no resources? She did one thing right. She called out to the man of God for help. Because somehow she believed the man of God is connected with God and God can help her. Today, as believers, we can go directly to God because Jesus lives in us. The Spirit of God dwells with us all the time. And so I just want to encourage you that whenever you are in trouble, whenever you are down, whenever you are depressed, whenever you are lost, whenever you do not know what to do, go to God. God is there to help you. God is always available to help you. And so Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all. She said, except a small jar of olive oil. Elisha said, Go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. And so she went and asked for jars. He said, then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour all into all the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him and shut the door behind her and her sons, and they brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there's not a jar left. Then they all stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the all and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. When you look at this story, so after she got the jars, with the little oil that she has, she began to pour oil in all the jars, and all the jars was full, were full. A miracle took place that day. She sold the oil, paid back her debts, 
and with all the extra all that she had, she was able to live on them. Her insurmountable problem was resolved that day. I just want to quickly look back with you to verse 2. You know, sometimes when we have an insurmountable problem, when we have a great challenge, we always think about what we need in order to overcome that challenge. We always look for help. We always think of something that is that, that, that needs to be great and powerful in order to, uh, we, 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 we always look for like maybe an abundance of resources. But I just want you to look at this. Elisha asked her, what do you have? And she said, I only have a small jar of oil. All I have is just a little bit. You know, brothers and sisters, this seems to be the way God operates. That little bit is enough. You remember the story when God raised Moses? God asked Moses, what do you have in your hand? And Moses said, it's a staff. The staff that was always with him. When God sent Elijah to the widow of Zarephath, what did the widow of Zarephath have? Just a little bit of oil and a little bit of flour. What about the feeding of the 5,000 that Danny mentioned two weeks ago? The resources came from that little boy who had the five loaves and two fish. Sometimes we look far away for our resources in order to help us out of our problem. But very often, our resources are just right where we are in our hands. And the thing that God used to multiply in order to take care of the needs of this particular widow was right there in her house, that small jar of olive oil. The next thing Elisha told her was to go around and ask for her neighbours for empty jars. It was not something difficult to do. She does not need ex, ex, uh, uh, she does not need a lot of knowledge. All she needed to do was something simple: go around and ask. Not foreigners, not strangers. She doesn't have to go far away. She only have to go to her neighbours and ask for those empty jars. It was simple. And lastly, all this was already available. The oil was available. The empty jars was available. So in that, even though she had this insurmountable problem, the basic ingredients that God needed to put together a miracle for her was little, simple, and available. I want to tell you a very Interesting story, something that happened to our family many, many years ago. In the late 80s, after the financial crisis, our family was in some kind of a financial difficulty. The little income that my dad brought home every month was not enough. My mother has to babysit. I think my older brother and my older sister at that time were still in tertiary education or just left university and started working. I was still in secondary school, my younger sister uh, still in primary school. Four school going children, all consuming finances. It was really tough. On top of that, my parents had debts that they needed to pay. Every month, it was not enough. We don't even have savings for a rainy day because we have gone through so much storm. All that we have has been spent. And now every month we have to pay debts, we have to pay our daily expenses. My mother was very worried, she was very lost, she didn't know what to do. And somehow she had this idea, a very simple idea, maybe after she prayed, and she decided that I will be a house broker. I must, I must tell you this, my mom had very little education. She only had up to, pri up to primary six. And because she has left school for so long, it is difficult for her to put alphabets together in such a way that she can read. And being Chinese educated, she had problem reading the name of roads. And if you have problem reading the name of roads, how to be a house broker? I've seen her book where she lists down all the addresses 
of the houses that she's trying to sell or rent out. And guess what? She actually developed a reverse ping-in system using Chinese words, the sounds of Chinese word, to, to phrase the, uh, the, the Malay uh, road names. And you know what? With the little ability that she has, without transportation, because we didn't own a car at that time, she managed to earn money in order for the family to survive. One particular story which I remember to this day was in the late 1980s, the church was going through a fundraising campaign. And one speaker came and said, you know, I believe that there's some people among you who will give $10,000 to the building fund of the church. And he challenged them that those of you who are burdened to do so, to, to stand up and acknowledge that God has really called them to do it. And one of the people that actually stood up with a pledge of 10,000 was my mother. I was just thinking, how can she come up with that money? How is that even possible? $10,000 was a princely sum for us. And during those times, just after the recession, and guess what? The month immediately after that, she made more money than that $10,000. She made, she, the month after that, she made enough money to pay off the $10,000 pledge and also enough to pay for the expenses of the family. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling this story to let you know that God can take care of you. And the way God takes care of you, it's amazing and marvelous. And all He requires are the little things, the simple things, and the things that are already available. God cares for you. God loves you. Let God help you. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for today. Lord, you are indeed so wonderful, so gracious to each and every one of us. We want to pray for all the mothers that we have in our congregation. Lord, you know their struggles, you know the difficulties that they go through in life. Lord, I pray that you speak to each and every one of them, especially during this time when they feel so stressed and feel so pressured. I pray that you come and encourage them and comfort them and give them wisdom, Lord. There are times when they have so many things that they need to do. They think and they think and they think. They exhaust their, their ability to think and they still cannot come up with a solution. Father I, pray, Father, I pray that you bless them with wisdom. Speak to them. Give them a way out. Enlighten them. And Father, we want to pray for all our mothers Lord, I pray that you grant them good health. And Father, I pray for all the children. Father, we pray that we as children would appreciate the mothers you have placed in our lives, to be thankful towards them, to encourage them, and to be a source of blessing to them. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mothers, Blessed Mother's Day. God be with you.